This show is brought to you by the Free State Gambling, Liquor and Tourism Authority. Hi, I'm Brendan Kelly. Welcome to the 2019 Free State Powerboat Festival. Plenty of action on the water at this festival, from juniors A and B class to GT15s, Formula 30s, leisure boats, and of course, the all-powerful Formula One powerboats. The idyllic conditions of the Ball River at the Parais and Golf and Country Estate played host to this event. Straight into the day's proceedings. Great turnout amongst all the classes. The crowd started gathering on the banks of the Vol River from early morning. We go straight into heat number two of junior A and B classes. Great start from boat number six, that's young Nico Porchita. We go on board with young Nico. Fantastic cornering skills from these youngsters. This is where it all starts. Nico Porchita, Harman Furry, Caroline Duncan, Jordan Barham competing in junior A, the D class made up of Enriquez, a smook, James Sampson, DJ Birman, and Lerato Sekelemane. Water conditions starting to roughen up as boat number 99 goes past. That's young Caroline Duncan, one of the lady drivers at this event. On board with young Nico once again. Just a bit of concentration in his eyes as the conditions certainly got rough. Barham, the Barham Bay boys, boat going through boat number one, he's the current South African champion, boat number four, James Sansom, making the best of the tricky conditions, Caroline Duncan once again, in the A class tucked in right behind the leader of the B class. Race leader having a quick look at the flags, they're running out of laps. Nine boat of Hermann Furi going through but on board once again with our race leader taking the win, heat number two, Nico Porchita. The water was hard, it was really, really windy, it was warm, it was a tough day. I have lots of fun and I'm looking, looking forward to the next race. and move straight onto the GT15 class. Three boats out in the water. Jordan Allen, Heinrich Biedersee and Jason Barham. This class, an internationally recognized class, extremely safe little hulls, handle rough conditions very, very well. You'll see how they turn these boats on a tiki as the flags dropped. It was the number one boat of young Jordan Allen, the reigning South African champion in this class. She's continuing the legacy of the racing Allen family. Grandfather Peter, a man well known in hydroplane racing for many, many years. Number two boat of Heinrich Peterser, nice and smooth through the corner. This is the triple one machine of Jason Barham. Just look how they throw these little boats into the corners. Conditions for racing, absolutely perfect. No wind to speak about. Flags going out as young Jordan Allen crosses the line to take the heat win. Place would be the number two boat of Heinrich Peterser. Followed home in third by the triple one machine of Jason Barham. I had fun racing with my friends today and it was a great day and I was very happy that I came first in all three heats. The flags drop for the start of race number one in the Formula 30s. Replica Formula One boats and straight away it is Nikita Duarte making a return to racing in the number one boat. She's got Nikita Trump on her outside in the number five boat. Right tucked in behind them it is Leah Sansom in number four. And 
fantastic little racing machines these on board with Leah Sansom look at the cornering ability of these Formula 30 craft handle rough water conditions absolutely brilliantly You often want to get a little bit of wind underneath it, and you can see Leah Sansom making that boat stand on its tail as she crosses the line to complete another lap. They're chasing Nikita Duarte. As we mentioned, she's making a welcome return to racing. She's been off the racing scene for a while, so great to have her back. She is the current South African champion in this class, and a dominant performance from her so far in heat number one. Boat number 22 going through that Sibasisa Maduna. Racing in the colors of the Free State Tourism Authority. Peter Trump getting a slightly wrong there as she came out the corner, overdoing it. In the background, we see it's the number nine boat of Heinrich Peterser getting it wrong. He's overdone it into the corner. Gonna have problems getting it going. Lots of cavitation issues with that boat. Propeller selection on these little boats, absolutely critical. Uh, Duarte just glancing at the officers of the day to see how many laps are left in the race. Leah Sampson having made her way past Nikita Trump. Three ladies, top three positions, fantastic for the future of powerboat racing in South Africa. Henry. Portkita crossing through in the number nine boat. 45 machine Tristan Barham crossing over as Sibasiso Maduna in the number 22 boat crosses to complete another lap. Our race leader Nikita Duarte totally untroubled out in front there. The battle for second place between Nikita Trump on the outside and Leah Sansom on the inside. Trump once again got ahead. Some great dicing further on down the field. Tristan Barham coming through, running very wide. You'll see the wind has picked up a little bit. Heinrich Portspeter, Sivasisa Maduna. As the checkered flag goes out to complete a dominant race win for boat number one, Nikita Duarte. Second place is going to be a sprint to the finish. It's going to be Nikita Trump just ahead of Leah Sansom. Let's hear from our race winner. Today's race was very good. Um, it was tough with the other boats, but I won the race all three heats. It was very nice. My last race was three years ago, and yeah, it was feeling good to get back on the water. No better way for the spectators to enjoy a relaxing day next to the Val River watching action-packed powerboat racing always a highlight the crowd supports at this race everybody thoroughly enjoying themselves getting into the party atmosphere at the start of the holiday season in south africa straight into the action of heat number two this is leisure boat racing boats in four different classes we've got the l1 the open class l2 l3 and l4 classes we on board with steve barham and megan Ponmoon in boat number 45 Raven Wildcat. But straight out in front it is the number 16 boat of Michael Furry. He's got the 20 machine of John Ross Duncan and Leah Sampson on his outside. Great tussle for positions one and two. Third place at the moment is Steve Barham and Megan Mopon Moon in boat number 45. Back on board with Steve Barham once again. Setup of these boats is critical. Not much wind to talk about, so the guys have to get the balance of the boats just right. John Ross Duncan, Leah Sanson going through, Steve Barham, Megan Ponmoon. Knock the trims down a little bit to get the nose of that boat back down again. Down the back straight, a little bit more windy, boat's a lot more twitchy. Fantastic onboard footage on boat number 45. Our race leader getting challenged now, Michael Faree versus John Ross Duncan. Triple eight boat of Marcel Mombas bouncing through the corner. As we 
start running out of laps in the race. Still absolutely nothing in it between the first place boat of Michael Furry on his inside. John Ross Duncan and Leah Sansom, boat number 20. Michael Furry having all of his work cut out to stay ahead of the blue machine. John Ross Duncan with the advantage now, hugging that turn boy. Should be able to run Michael Furry slightly wider down the back straight. Action once again from Steve Barham's boat. He's got a bird's eye view of the action. He's just waiting to pick up the pieces should anything go wrong. Absolutely fantastic racing here in leisure boats. L1 craft versus an L2 craft and neck and neck racing. Duncan once again having just just got ahead of our race leader Steve Barham along for the ride. This is brilliant stuff to watch. Wildcat, the 45 boat of Steve Barham and Megan Pondman. Steve having to keep that nose down into the wind as he chases. The crowd starting to really get into this racing. Well, John Ross Duncan with the advantage over Michael Furry. how these boats just skip across the top of the water. Michael Furry having got ahead, but you see how that boat is bouncing. He has to be in absolute control. That massive Johnson motor, keeping Michael Furry just ahead of John Ross Duncan. Marcel Mombas in the triple eight boat. Number seven, that is Edwin Biermann and Madeleine Duncan. Still nothing in it between the first and second place. Steve Barham still running third. He's starting to run out of laps. Michael Furry having to keep that boat down. Some low flying there from the race leader. These guys are certainly going to know that they've been in a dogfight here. Great to see the incredibly tight racing between the top three. Marcel Mombas now pushing very hard. His co-pilot hanging on for dear life as they go into that corner. The number seven machine of Edwin Biermann and Madeleine Duncan crossing. Our race leaders now starting to mix it up with the back markers. This could be an added dimension to the race. Once again, we're watching Marcel Mombas, the triple eight boat going through. But the action back to the front between Michael Furry and John Ross Duncan. Barham having closed the, closed the gap in third place. Furry with the advantage now, crossing the head of John Ross Duncan and Leah Sansom. Steve Barham and Megan Ponman still right up there. Michael Furry having now opened up a bit of a gap. Looks like Steve Barham's the man on a mission. He's closed right up to the second place boat of John Ross Duncan. Just wonder if John Ross Duncan and Leah Sansom have picked up a problem as the white flag goes out to signify the last lap of the race. This is going to come down to a drag finish, I'm sure. Furry with the advantage on the inside. John Ross Duncan on the outside, coming through on the inside. Behind them it is Steve Barham and Megan Ponman closing in. Down the back straight for the last time, behind the islands. To the top corner we go. Michael Furry having opened up a gap now. Second place man, John Ross Duncan and Leah Sansom. Followed closely by Steve Barham and Megan Ponman take a well-deserved win. He had to fight hard for it. Michael Furry, John Ross Duncan, and third place going to Steve Barham and Megan Ponmoon. The action moves straight into heat number three. Michael Furry decided to start at the back of the grid. Into the lead, it was Steve Barham and Megan Ponmoon. They managed to open up a significant lead over the rest of the field. But we'll soon see the hard charging 
Michael Fourri. Once again, the bouncing boat of Marcel Mombas going through. Right behind them, it is John Ross Duncan, Leah Sansom, followed by Michael Fourri. Edwin Biermann goes through, but coming through to complete yet another race victory. It is Michael Fourri in the number 16 boat, followed by Steve Barham and Megan Pond Moon. Third place going to go to John Ross Duncan and uh, Leah Sansom in boat number 20. The third heat now, we, we, we fell behind so that we can give the other guys a chance to run in front. And yeah, unfortunately I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to make it through the field. But yeah, we, it was good. Excellent. The enthusiastic crowd waited in anticipation for the Formula One boats to hit the water. Heat number one, as the flags go down, we're on board with Brett Stewart. On his left hand side it is Ati Trump in the number 69 machine. Fantastic to have nine Formula Ones on the water. See the 69 boat of Ati Trump moving into the lead. Brett Stewart slotting into second place. These boats capable of turning at virtually full speed, 180 degree turn at 180 kilometers an hour. Bit of a porpoise there from Ati Trump as the boats turn around the top turn boy and head down the main straight in front of the very, very appreciative crowd. Ati Trump, Brett Stewart, Brett Stewart racing in the colors of Club Marine. 77 boat of Keegan Frankovitz going through in third place. Right behind him, it's the number 10 boat. John Ross Duncan, his second outing in a Formula One in boat number 10. Ronan Dixon in the 32 boat going through. Once again, on board with Brett Stewart. Ati Trump very, very comfortable out in front in the 69 boat. Trump dominating. Brett Stewart having to fight really hard. Look at the boat, completely airborne. Club Marine, boat number four. Got Nico Vessels in boat number 46 there in the yellow boat. And then Fakile Sapire. The up and coming youngster in boat number six, he had a big moment in practice where he rolled the boat, hence racing without his back cowling. Unfortunately, it got lost, but uh, Veynant de Jaja having to do lots of work on that boat through the night to get him back on the water. Great to see the driver from the Free State Government doing so well in Formula One. Red Stewart still in second place, chasing very hard. Ati Trump dominating from the front. Got one of the back markers. Looks like it's the number 10 boater, John Ross Duncan. That is passing there now. White flag goes out for the back markers, but checkered flag for Ati Trump as he gets the race victory. Brett Stewart will get second place. And Nico Vessels crossing in third. Brett Stewart, second place in race number one. I can see you've had a bit more time in the boat. The confidence is getting there. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit more comfortable. Paul's worked with me a little bit on the boat. Um, yeah, I think I understand where the limits are, but uh, yeah, IT is quick. That boat is very, very, very quick. Um, but yeah, like we wanna, we got some ideas. We're gonna play with a few things, and maybe we can have some fun in the next seat. It is a bit lonely being so, you know, off a lap behind. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna work on it, and uh, yeah, we got. But you know, the boats have got different characteristics. We benefit in certain um, altitudes and, and then it will be a bit negative for him. So we'll see how the rest of the season goes, but yeah, we're gonna have some fun. The action moves straight into heat number two. The camera on Ati Trom's boat now facing backwards. We forwards on Brett Stewart's boat. As the flags go down, Brett Stewart mentioned that Paul Shepard had been doing a lot of work with him on the boat. The boat actually belonging to Paul Shepard the boat that he has won six South African championships with. And into the lead, it is actually Brett Stewart. Brett Stewart having got ahead of Ati Tromp. This should be an interesting race. Ati Tromp has proven the man to beat this season. Extremely quick hull that he has got there. Always beautifully, beautifully turned out. Ati racing in the colors of a t Plumbers. Cockpit of Fred Stewart. You can see it's a little bit loose. 
Ski Les Sofiri going through. It's all without the back cowling on his boat. Egan Frankovitz and Ronan Dixon racing as teammates in Formula One. Tromp having to pull out all the stops to try and catch up to the very, very quick Brett Stewart. Brett Stewart, a man who has been around Formula One racing for a long time. 46 boat of Nico Vessels without his front canopy and the number six boat of Fikile Sepiro without his back cowling on. Lots of action here between Nico Vessels and Fikile Sepire. Vessels who has made the transformation from leisure boats to Formula One as we see the number 77 boat of Keegan Frankovitz going through. John Ross Duncan crosses once again. Ronan Dixon goes through. On board once again with Brett Stewart. Whatever Paul Shepard has done to this boat seems to have worked because he has had some great pace in this race. Unfortunately for Andre Kemp, he hold his boat in qualifying, so Andre Kemp not on the water in the second of the horizontal and vertical drilling boats. Mati Tromp having to pull out all stops now to catch our race leader, Brett Stewart. Fantastic onboard footage. Really gives an indication how fast these boats are. Kile Sapire goes through. Egan Frankovitz in the 77 boat crossing now. now going to have to contend with some of the back markers looks like Ronan Dixon on his outside Dixon doing the wise thing and just moving out of the way for the quicker boats to come through Nico Vessels in the 46 boat crosses he's racing in the colors of Boaters World on board with Ati Tromp Nico Vessels crosses, Fikile Sapiri and our race leader coming through, drinking lots of water there. You can just see how much water is thrown up and, and Stewart seems to have spluttered a bit as Ati Trump goes through to take the race lead, but he seems to have gone straight. What has happened? Uh, Ati Trump has gone straight. I wonder if he thought maybe that the race had, had uh, finished on that lap, but it's now nah, Nico Vessels, some confusion out there. Fikile Sapiri, Brett Stewart has caught up to him again. So at this stage it is Brett Stewart that is leading, not too sure what has happened to Ati Trump. Nico Vessels just ahead of Stewart, he should be coming through to take the checkered flag now. Great onboard footage here, crosses Nico Vessels awake and comes through to take the checkered flag. Ati Trump having recovered to get back into second place again. Chatting to our race winner Brett Stewart, second place Ati Trump. Brett, Ati, you guys had a ding dong till there, talk us through the race. Yeah, um, we had a good dice down to the back straight and uh, yeah, I think I just, I, I don't know, I had just a little bit of, we changed the prop and maybe it had a bit of legs at the top and yeah, we went through and it's very tight at the top there so it's really only place for one boat so we managed to get through there and yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was quite lacquer but getting to the back markers on this course is, is very tricky because it's narrow uh, and you've got to think carefully which way you're going to take and where they're going to go so yeah, that was a bit challenging and yeah, the end, end was a bit nerve-wracking. I think we lost an injector or something so we lost power but I, it was just, I think another 500 meters and it would have been over for me. <laughs> To you, Ati, um, were you surprised at the, the pace that Brett had suddenly found? Yeah, and I was surprised. He pulled me on the start to the first boy, and yeah, so like he said, once you pass the first turn boy, there's only place for one boat. And yeah, I tried whatever I could, but he was too good. <laughs> Even though Ati Trump lost his cowling in heat number three, he dominated ahead of Nico Vessels. Third place would go to John Ross Duncan in the number 10 boat followed by the up-and-coming star Fikile Sapire in boat number six. With two race wins and a second place, Ati Trump was the man of the moment. A well-attended prize giving concluded yet another successful Free State Powerboat Festival. 
congratulations to all of our winners and to those that didn't win, better luck next time. We look forward to catching up with you at the next event. So from me, Brendan Kelly, it's goodbye until next time. Brought to you by the Free State Gambling, Liquor and Tourism Authority.